I want to invite a few people to join me on the platform. We're just going to do a very short housekeeping here. Uh, my wife, Renee, would you come? Stella, would you come? Liz, would you come and please stand on the platform with me? I want to say good morning to the church. Good morning. I'm so glad you're with us. Uh, ushers, would you come? Please come and stand. We want to welcome all our first-time guests. If you are visiting with us, it's a joy to have you in the house. I already met a number of first-time people that are uh, joining us. We love you. We're so thankful you're here. Uh, and maybe you, we have a gift, sorry, we have a gift for you. It's a gift bag with some information about our church. There's all kinds of goodies there for you in your house. And all you have to do in a moment, in fact, even right now, the ushers can just turn and wait and just look. And if you are uh, our guest today, all, in a moment, our ushers will just slowly walk back. All you have to do is just lift your hand and they'd love to give you this gift and welcome you to RHPC. Ushers, go ahead and walk back. God, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Nice to have you with us. God bless you. Nice to have you here. God bless you. Let's welcome all our first-time guests in the house today. God bless you. Nice to have you with us. Uh, just a reminder uh, that Kids Church is taking place right now in the lower level, and we are back to our junior high class for all kids, grades 6, 7, and 8. And so that starts again today. So if you are in grades 6, 7, and 8, you are released at this time for your class in the lower level. Thank you, Renee, for putting this class back together. Would you come and share with us this announcement today? Thank you. Well, I'm really excited that we are relaunching I have a sidekick here. Um, we're relaunching our uh, junior high class today, so I'm really excited about that. Natalie is waiting downstairs for all the junior highs who are going to be joining her. And I just want to make an appeal. If you are interested in working with kids, if you're interested in serving in our children's church ministry, we are looking for volunteers. I'm hoping that we can have a fully staffed nursery. So this is an appeal to those of you who are interested in working with babies, who are interested in holding babies, who are interested in working with little children. If, if that tugs on your heart, and you are a youth age 12 and older, you are an adult, and you're interested in working with kids, especially little kids, I'd love to hear from you. I have a ministry brochure available for you. I'm going to be at the hub at the end of the service, so I look forward to meeting with everybody who'd love to serve in our kids' church ministry. Thank you very much. Thank you, sweetheart. Sunday night prayer meeting tonight at 6 o'clock with Trudy leading our Sunday night prayer meeting. If you have the hour, come and join us tonight at 6 o'clock. Uh, just a few reminders quickly. Overflow Youth Convention, grade 9 to 12, it's coming. We are now including grade 8s. So if there's a grade 8 in your household, please pick up a form at the hub and sign up for the upcoming Overflow Youth Convention. Our youth pastor starts May the 1st, and we're very excited about Pastor Alicia coming from Ottawa. Today, she's in the Congo on a missions trip with her church from Ottawa, and so please keep her in prayer as she's ministering there, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, having the Lord bring her here to serve our youth and we're very excited. So please keep Pastor Alicia in your prayers. Also, just a reminder, water baptism class this Friday at 7 o'clock. Pick up an application in the foyer, and we'll see you at this class this Friday, 7 o'clock. You don't want to miss it. Uh, mm, Liz, Stella. Yes. <laughs> no hugs. <laughs> well, good morning, church. I'm here to invite all of our seniors. If you're turning 65 or older this year, you're invited to a free brunch here Sunday, uh, Saturday, Saturday, March 25th from 11 to 1. Special request for our seniors' men. 
We're looking to fill the table of 8 to 10, so please sign up today. It will be a day filled with fun, games, foods, fellowship, but most importantly, a chance for our seniors to connect. I'm looking forward to seeing all of our seniors at this brunch. Please sign up at the Hub at the end of the service. We are also looking for more volunteers from the young people. I know age ain't nothing but a number, but you have to be at least 12. 12 to maybe 18 years of age. Uh, we are looking for uh, young people to help us volunteer next week, Saturday. Where would we be without our seniors? They are the foundation of our family, the foundation of our community, and the foundation of our church. And I know for myself growing up, I would not be here today if it were not for the prayers and the love and support of the seniors that helped to raise myself and many other young people. So please come on out next week, Saturday. If you're interested in volunteering, there is a sign-up sheet at the front. And as Stella mentioned, there will be games, there will be food. And if you're a high school student, you will be given volunteer hours. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stella. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Renee. Uh, next Sunday morning, Teen Challenge will be here. The men's choir, 24 men from London. They'll be arriving on the bus at 9 a.m. Service is at 10.30. They'll be singing up a storm in the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Don't miss next Sunday. Next Sunday night. Next Sunday night is our vision night. You don't want to miss it. We are inviting all our members, all our adherents, everybody who considers RHPC your home church. This is the place we're meeting in the fellowship hall for an hour and a half. We're going to update you on some business items, but our key discussion, we as the board, we want to hear from you. And our question is, how can we reach the next generation? And so this is our vision for 2023. Now this is your opportunity to share your heart for the next generation, for your children, your grandchildren, your community. And we want to collectively get ideas going. We want to hear what God's put on your heart. Uh, so please come join us next Sunday. The board will be hosting the event and it starts at 6.30. There'll be coffee, tea, refreshments, child care. Free child care is available. Please come. Uh, next slide. Listen. When the whole church. Hmm? When the whole church brings the whole tithe. The whole church receives the. Do you believe that? Listen. I like whole blessings. And so I want to pray a whole blessing over you would you hold your hands out before the lord father thank you for the people of god thank you for their faithfulness thank you for their obedience today we worship you in the house not just in song not just in fellowship but we worship you in the giving of your tithes and our offerings and i pray an open heaven blessing over the people of God, that you would make rich and add no sorrow to it, that, Lord, we go from strength to strength, blessing to blessing, and glory to glory. God receives the glory. We receive the victory. We declare it by faith, and I bless you in the Lord. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, I'm so delighted to have Reverend Mark Hazard here. Mark, you can come at this time. Uh, what a delight to have our guests. Pastor Mark has been in full-time ministry since 1980. Mark and his wife, Val, have served four churches in Ontario, most recently at Parkwood in Windsor, where Mark served as senior pastor for 23 years. Pastor Mark currently serves as the Regional Missions Director for the Latin America and Caribbean region. Mark works with missionaries, connects with national partners, and serves the PAOC's global vision to reach, plant, equip, and care for the people of God. Pastor Mark and I have known each other for 38 years. I have invited Pastor Mark to join us today to inspire us 
towards being a mission-minded, missions-giving, and missions-sending church. And I'm so delighted that you could be here today, and you've brought a guest with you, and I'll leave that for you to introduce your guest. What a joy. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Pastor Will. Wow. You are beautiful. You know, um, one of the things I love most about uh, what Val and I do these days serving missionaries is that when we're in Canada, we get to visit churches. And, uh, you know, there's some churches you go to, absolutely, brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, no question about it, wonderful, beautiful people. But in some of those churches, I feel such a connection in the spirit. And most of you, I don't know, but in the spirit, I know this house. Does that make sense to you? Like, I get you. <laughs> I feel frighteningly at home here. God bless you. Pastor Will, thank you for this invitation. I had the wonderful privilege when Val and I pastored in Huntsville, Ontario, back in the 80s. Uh, Pastor Will's family moved to the area and attended our church and were a wonderful part of our church. So I knew your pastor when he was a teenager. <laughs> Have I got stories for you? <laughs> In fact, it was so long ago, I knew your pastor when he had hair. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Pastor Will, I bless you. You're a man of God. Wow, you're a man of God. Yeah. Yeah. And I bless you. And I knew exactly what I was going to preach about until I got here. <laughs> so when all else fails, turn in your Bible to page one and see where we go. Page one, get going. I'm not kidding. So we'll start at Genesis 1, verse 1. Hope you brought a lunch. We could be here for a while. In the beginning. There you go. In the beginning. It's so fundamental that we sometimes miss it. And for, uh, forgive me, folks, for... Um, forgive me, for, uh, like, we don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to be a little more direct. Uh, and it may seem like I'm not a nice guy. I'm really a nice guy. <laughs> but I don't have time to convince you of that, so just believe that. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a little more direct. And I sometimes, because I believe that you guys can handle this. This is so fundamental, and yet we get it so mixed up. We become so arrogant that we think we're in charge. Even, even some doctrines today almost present. God like some sort of a cosmic Santa Claus that is there at our beckoning to do what we want him to do. 
Brothers and sisters, there's a God. And it's not you. And it's not me. It's him. It's him. I love the focus of the worship if you're visiting today. You, you don't, there's no confusion here. There's one God. There's only one. In the beginning, there you go. And God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. Let me just pause there for a minute. Darkness, co darkness comes in life. There was darkness in the beginning. There's darkness today. But I really like this next line. And the Spirit of God was hovering, was moving over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was and God saw that the light was good. There you go. So the Spirit of God was hovering over the darkness, the emptiness, the voidness, the Holy Spirit of God. There was, there was cosmic confusion in the emptiness. But the Spirit of God was hovering. And God said, let there be. And there was. And God saw that it was. So out of the, confu the cosmic confusion, God brought order. God brought order. And we don't have time this morning to look at it, but we know that the creation process continued, culminated with the creation of man and woman, and then on the seventh day, God rested. So God put man and woman in the garden to help maintain the order on his behalf. But then the enemy came. The enemy came and lied and deceived. Sin was born. Now, whenever sin comes into the picture, we go back to confusion. It's just, it's just how sin works. Sin works against the order that God has for us. Like, God is not a, a killjoy. He loves us and cares for us. So, that, so when he says to us to save, stay from sin, he's not, he's not telling us to stay away from a good time. He's not trying to kill our joy and our, our fun. He's trying to bring order and meaning to our lives. And, and man and woman left to their own discretion are going to lean into this sinfulness. And that's what happened. The enemy came and mankind chose what they wanted over what God planned and confusion ensued. Okay, so now... Go over to chapter 11. This is the story of the Tower of Babel. It's an amazing story. And, and it's about how people got together and they decided that they were going to build this tower that would reach into the sky. And, and, and it says in verse 4, this will make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. You can see the struggle there, brothers and sisters. You can see, so let's go back to where we started. In the beginning, but now man, God has created mankind 
And man wants to do things so that they will be recognized, not God being recognized. They wanted to make themselves like Hmm. So God comes down in verse 5. Lord, come down. Look at the city and the tower the people were building. Look, he said, the people are united and they all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out will be impossible for them. So let's go down and confuse the people with different languages. Then they won't be able to understand each other. So God then birthed confusion through languages. Okay. So we have many languages. So if anybody here is Spanish, buenos dias, hermanos y hermanas, Dios los bendiga, mis amigas. Now some of you know exactly what I'm saying. I'm guessing a little bit, but the Spanish people will get that message. Yeah. Yeah, good morning, brothers and sisters. God bless you all. Yeah. And you could say that in many languages because you're such a multicultural church. So through language, there is, there is confusion. And God wanted that so that he could replant his purpose. So in Genesis 12... The Lord had said to Abram, who became Abraham, and get this, church, leave your native country, your relatives, your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. Now, don't miss that. Some people, you just glance at that and say, yeah, God told him, that he should go to this land or that land. No. God said, Abram, you get moving and I will show you where. So God's plan, God's solution for the confusion is for men and women to follow his leading. In Galatians, I am crucified with Christ. Therefore, it's no longer I that lives, but Christ lives in me. So, when we are born again by the Spirit of God, brothers and sisters, we're not in charge. We are His. We, are, we become united with the purposes of God and the order that He wants to speak in to the confusion. Now, I don't have to convince you in 2023, there's a lot of confusion in the world. Wow! There's economic confusion. There's political confusion. There's, Val and I have been spending some time in Florida and traveling to various uh, countries. And down there, the news and, wow! Whew! Confusion! The stock market, confusion, there's confusion. So, just like in Genesis 11 and 12, when there's confusion, God's solution is to direct men and women to lead us and guide us to a place that he will show us. Now, I know some of you are, are very organized and structured, and you've got your life all mapped out. 
So did I. Enter God. So, I was born and raised on a farm in southwestern Ontario. And my dad developed this business. He was uh, an agribusiness. He was quite a visionary. He, he developed over many years uh, feed mills and uh, grain elevators and uh, selling all, uh, s supplies for the farmers and all of this kind of stuff. I remember when I was a kid and one of my pastors said, Mark, you're either going to be a businessman or a pastor. And I just smiled because he was a nice old guy. He was old. He would have been close to Pastor Will's age. And, <laughs> and I just thought to myself, Pastor, thank you for your kind words. In my mind, but I'm going into my dad's business. That's where I'm going. I had it all figured out. But God messed with my plans. He does that, Pastor. He got into areas of my plans. I wasn't sure that he belonged there. In the beginning, see, that's what I needed to remember. Not in the beginning, Mark. Not in the beginning, me. In the beginning. So, he said, no, Mark, this is when I'm a teenager. By the way, love seeing young people in, in the house. I love this, one generation to another. Love that. Just want to tell you something? That goes both ways. And you young people, it's been burning on my heart ever since I got... That this isn't just us old people passing stuff down from you. You've got stuff to pass to us. We need you in the body of Christ. We need you to step up and take your place. Every generation... My generation have, hasn't got it all. No, no. It goes both ways. So, God says, so, Mark, as a teenager, so I want you to go to Bible college. Okay, well, that's not going to hurt. That can't be that painful. I got through grade 13 at high school. Surely I can... So I go to Bible college, and towards the end of Bible college, because I was thinking, you know, it was only three years back in those days. So, after three years, I'll go back to my dad's business. And towards, like God, like God just makes these decisions. He didn't even ask my opinion. <laughs> Like, do you think you're God or something? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, you are. In the beginning. Ah, ha, ha, ha. No, Mark, you're not going back into your dad's business. You're going pastoring. I want you to be a shepherd of the flock. And I thought, well, okay, God. Then, because I'm from the farm, as I told you, please... Please, God, just put me in a little country church because I get those people. I, that's where I'm from. Just put me out there and I'll just... The cattle are lowing. The baby awakes. I mean, I'm... <laughs> and so I start on staff at a smaller country church down in Petrolia, and that church grew and wonderfully. And then we go to Huntsville and met your pastor there and a little larger church, and then to Barry to a little larger church. And I'm going, God? You see, when I told God, God, I'll go pastoring, but just put me in a little country church, 
He didn't say anything, so I just thought he took my advice. <laughs> I thought he was listening. So then we go to Barry and a little larger church, and then we go to Windsor, and I'm sitting in this, going in this church and looking at the auditorium, and on Sunday there's hundreds of people, and I'm going, what? In the beginning, God. So when God wants to solve the confusion, the onus is not on me or you to solve the confusion. Brothers and sisters, oh, I want to jump down, but that's a big jump. <laughs> I'm scared. But we've got a part to play. And the part to play is God, wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to do, in the beginning, see? So God, you're in charge and I'm not. So we pastor for 38 years and thankful and just kind of settling all that and all that. And I get a phone call and our international missions director says, Mark, would you consider leaving your church and become the regional director for Latin America Caribbean? I mean, I'm just learning how to pastor. I'm a slow learner, 38 years. I'm finally getting the feel of it. And he's calling and asking me if I'll do something different. I'm going, God, are you serious? Yes, Mark, I'm serious. I want you. So I said to, to Brother Murray, I said, so Murray, like, I don't know how all this works. So, I, I mean, I was 58 at the time. I, so is there a salary involved? Like, I don't know. He goes, oh, yeah, but you have to raise it. <laughs> okay. So what if I don't raise it? You don't get it. Okay, Brother Murray, are there benefits? Oh yeah, we've got the PAOC has a great benefit package. Okay, great. So, so I can sign, yeah, you can get those benefits, but you have to raise the money to pay for the, okay. Well, Murray, I'm getting old. Like what about the pension? Can Oh, yeah, you can continue to pay into the pension. I said, yeah, and then the PAOC matches that. He goes, oh, yeah, they'll, they'll match it, but you have to raise their match, too. <laughs> like, I was so spoiled, Pastor Will in Windsor. It was ridiculous. I was so... And, and I'm saying, I'm leaving that and saying... And then God whispers and says, Mark... Step out of the boat. Come on now. Step out of the boat and walk on the water. So I had a chat with my wife. She's a woman of faith. So out of the boat we go. Because in the beginning, and in almost five years, not one month, not one month has our budget not been met or exceeded. I don't know. What do I know? In the beginning, God. So again, so get this now. God's answer to confusion is men and women of God who will just Say, yes. Yes. Acts chapter 13. So let me just give you a couple of more passages here. Acts chapter 13. A prayer meeting. I know this church loves to pray. You got a prayer meeting tonight. Among the prophets and teachers of the church at Antioch of Syria, Barnabas, Simeon, Manian, Saul, they were fasting and praying. 
They were worshiping, and the Holy Spirit said, dedicate to me Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I have called them. Okay, so brothers and sisters, let me tell you something about prayer meetings. Prayer meetings is not just asking. Praise God, I'm glad that he invites us to come and and bring our needs. I'm glad that he's a God who saves and heals and sets people free. And I could talk to you all day about miracles that I've seen God do. Praise God. He invites us to come and ask. But prayer is much more than asking. It's listening. Let me just... Let me just tell you something that will just blow your minds. Every time you pray, before you're finished, just stop and say, Hey God, is there anything you want me to do? We're great at asking God to do things. Well, he interrupted in this prayer meeting and said, Hold it! Set apart Barnabas and Saul. So here they are in the New Testament church. So again, in the beginning, then there's the confusion. God says to Abram, leave the country and go to a country that I will show you. So he introduces this walk of faith. Abram does what he's told and we're still talking about him today, this father of faith. So that's the Old Testament. So the New Testament. So again, so they're in this prayer meeting. So set apart Barnabas and and Saul. So how cool is it? In verse 3, so after more fasting and prayer, the men laid their hands on them and sent them on their way. Like that's quick. Let me just, now this, uh, this may affect the attendance tonight for your prayer meeting. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, before some of you go to bed tonight, you might be on your way to another country. That's what happened here. You might be going into a whole nother... Now, for most people, it doesn't happen so instantaneous. But I'm telling you, God changes the direction of people's lives. And when I was chatting with pastor in, in the office, do you know something that I'm, I'm discovering? And I desperately hope that I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But I'm discovering that uh, the longer somebody serves God the less likely they are to take radical steps of faith. Like when I was a young Christian, when I graduated from Bible college, I didn't worry about anything. When I was in Bible college, I worked, worried about things less, like studying. And it kind of showed up in my marks. But... Well, when I graduated, I I just knew that God was going to take care of us because he's God. He's God. And brothers and sisters, just like God called Abraham to step out of his father's house, and just like he called uh, um, uh, Barnabas and Saul to step out of a prayer meeting, just like he called me to step out of pastoring, Brothers and sisters, he's still calling men and women to step out and do his bidding because that's how he responds to confusion. So there's lots of confusion. So there should be lots of calling and lots of obedience. And we just need to learn to say, yes, God. So in the early church, they prayed and fasted. They sent and they went. And then they gave Crazy. In, in Acts 4, Barnabas sold some property, brought it in, laid it at the apostles' feet. No big production. Just radical sacrifice, generosity for the king. Here you go. For God so loved that he... 
that there you go. And if we want to be like God, we need to function in radical giving. Our words, our finances, our service, whatever he wants us to do. So this very same Barnabas that was now called to serve in missions was, was called to give radically, radically. And that's 2 Corinthians 8, it's amazing. Paul's saying to the people, you know, there's so much that you guys are good at. I want you to grow in the grace of giving in the grace of giving. And then in 2 Corinthians 9, he said, as you sow, you will reap so that you can be generous on every occasion. These people, they prayed in faith. They prophesied in faith. They went in faith. And they sowed in financially in faith. Just absolutely Radical, radical, all in response to God's call who noticed the confusion. When there's confusion, brothers and sisters, God is calling people. So he's calling men and women in the room today. He's calling people. He's calling people. He's calling younger people. One of, the, one of the greatest gifts my parents gave me. When I graduated from Bible college and I had received a call to go and serve as a youth pastor in Petroli, as I told you. And my dad talked to me. He said, Mark, there's a place for you in our family business. You're welcome to be here in the business. Just so you know, you're welcome. He said, but more than anything else, don't do what I want you to do. Do what God wants you to do. Yeah. He's still calling men and women. So we're all involved in the kingdom. Lots of confusion. Lots of confusion. We're all involved. Praying, fasting, sending, going, sowing. Oh, and, and in 2 Corinthians 9, that, that bit about as you sow, you will reap. Brothers and sisters, if you've not launched into tithes, offerings, and alms, I don't have time to tell you today, but you are robbing yourself. As, as Andy Stanley said, generosity isn't something we want from you. It's something we want for you. There's something powerful. And Val and I have pastored three churches that were all in debt. Our last church was millions of dollars in debt, literally. And that was back in the 90s. And we just uh, said, well, we're going to sow more into the kingdom of God. We are going to sponsor more missionaries. We're going to we are going to invest outside the walls of the church. Brothers and sisters, as we sow, as we gave money away, our general fund just went up supernaturally, and our debt was coming down like wild. And millions of dollars of debt was erased because we sowed into the kingdom. How can that make no sense? Absolutely. That's how God works. In the beginning, Amar, come quickly. And then, Pastor, I'm coming back to you. So my friend Amar, born and raised in Guyana, a kid walking down the road to go to the Hindu temple and heard some people in a house singing. Father Abraham has many sons. <laughs> no recordist. Yeah, last Sunday, you guys sang a kid's chorus in church. I watched it. Brother Amar heard this and went in, and they told you about Jesus, and you? Explored, accepted. And here, all these years later, Amar comes to Canada as a young Christian, and now serves on the deacon board at Cedarview Church in Newmarket. And you work for? Toyota Canada. 
go to Canada and got a whole other story how uh, you became a mechanic, but you are settled. You're, you're at the top. Didn't you win something from Toyota? Yeah, in um, 2005, I was the uh, skill competition champion for all of Toyota and Lexus across the country and represented Canada in Japan. Well, so, so if they award you a car, a Toyota, or a Lexus, I think it needs to come this way. I'm just saying. Okay. We don't put good product in bad hands. <laughs> this just went south fast. We put a love of God in your hands. Yeah, yeah. So, Amar, you are at the top of your career, but there's a Bible verse that's been very dear to you, and it's? Matthew 6.33. I wonder if I could take the mic from you. And if, if, if I do. Got 60 seconds to land this plane. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, I wanted to go back to one generation to another, and I wanted to say that one generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. God used Matthew 6, 33. You're not getting this mic back. <laughs> God used Matthew 6, 33 to um, open my eyes when he. Um, said, you were reading there, um, Genesis 12, when you said, I'm going to read it the correct way. Now the Lord said to Amar, go from Canada and your kindreds and your job to Guyana. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? He's at the top of his career. God says, I want you to go back to, Amar, or to uh, Guyana. Amar said, God took him to 633 of Matthew, seek first the kingdom of God. You are leaving your profession, you're leaving your home and your family, and you are going to establish a vocational training school and to lead young people to Jesus. Because in 1983-84, a, a man saw me, saw potential and called me out that orchestrated by God. So I'm going to go down that corporate ladder and go into those communities. As, I don't know if you know, but Guyana has the second highest suicide rate, and we're talking about our another generation. Right. So we old folks get to go and invest in the young people, like how that man invested in me. Yeah, that's right. So it's not about me. It's in the beginning was God. And because I'm a seed of Abraham, that verse applies to me. Wow. And you say, well, you know, Pastor Mark, that's okay for you preacher sorts like you and Pastor Will. But hold on. Curveball, enter Brother Amar, master mechanic. There's confusion. God calls men and we can't solve the world's problems. We can only be obedient, do what we're called. And one of the things I love about what you're doing is you're going back to your home country. Some of you just may, just maybe, go back to your home country. You never know what God's going to do. But one thing we do know, in the beginning, in the beginning, God. So, Lord, thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Wow. In the beginning, God. Lord, forgive me. Forgive us for times when we've tried to get in the driver's seat. It's not in the beginning me. It's in the beginning you, God. So we just place our lives in your hands. Lord, what beautiful worship today. Beautiful worship. But I'm reminded that some of our most beautiful worship is when we submit ourselves to your lordship and pray like Jesus prayed in the garden, not my will, but thy will be done for your glory alone. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bless your church family.
Would you stand with me, please? I'm going to invite Renee and the worship team to come to seek, sing this beautiful song again, Speak Jesus. This house is now a house of prayer. I will dismiss with prayer, invite you to greet our guests, love one another, and we'll bless you in the Lord. This is your house. You can come, be yourself, and find a place of prayer or fellowship. And uh, I want to bless you in the Lord. Father, thank you for the message today. In the beginning, God. Lord, remind us of this powerful truth. Thank you for Amar. Thank you for Pastor Mark. Thank you for the word of God today. Lord, refresh us, renew us, strengthen us. God receives the glory. We receive the victory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus To every dark addiction starts to break There is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every strong. Shine through the shadows. 
Gottes Mund.